Hello, I'm going to be talking about Pearson's R. It's a commonly used statistic to measure the relationship between two variables. Pearson's R ranges in value from negative 1 to positive 1. When Pearson's R is negative, that indicates that the values from the two variables tend to be in opposite directions. For example, um, how much money you spend and how much money you save. People who spend a lot tend to save less money. Another example of a negative correlation would probably be how often someone brushes their teeth and the number of cavities they have. We expect someone who brushes their teeth often to have fewer cavities and someone who doesn't get around to brushing very often to have many more. So negative correlation, the values for the two variables tend to go in opposite direction. And we would expect the Pearson's R value in that case to be negative. Something uh, below zero uh, and it can go all the way to negative one. If Pearson's R is positive, that indicates that the correlation itself is positive. So that um, height and weight, for example, is positively correlated. Uh, the taller someone is, the more they tend to weigh. Pearson's R is bounded on either side by negative 1 and positive 1. Negative 1 is the strong of a Pearson's correlation that you can get for a negative correlation. It means that um, you can make with perfect accuracy predictions. Given, for example, how much uh, someone brushes their teeth, you could predict perfectly how many cavities they would have. Uh, Pearson's correlation of positive one is as strong of a positive correlation you could get. And in that case, if you knew someone's height, you could predict exactly what their weight would be. When we talk about uh, Pearson's R, often we describe the relationship as either a weak correlation, a moderate correlation, or a strong correlation. A weak correlation is where the Pearson's R value is 0.3 or less. And when you look at this, you'll notice that there's two vertical lines, one on either side of R. That means absolute value of R. So ignoring the sign, whether it's positive or negative, if R is less than or equal to 0.3, that's considered a weak correlation. On the other hand, if R is greater than or equal to 0.7, it's considered a strong correlation. A moderate correlation is in between. It's greater than 0.3, but less than 0.7. Below the weak, moderate, and strong correlation, I've shown you what a scatter plot would look like for each of those three outcomes. So for a weak correlation, notice that the dots on the scatter plot almost look like a clouded dots. Maybe you could see that there's uh, some predictive value if you know uh, one variable to predict the other variable, but it's not very strong. So it's a weak correlation. For a strong correlation, notice that how these dots tend to be um, fairly close to one another. In fact, I could draw a line through the dots, and this line would be called the best fitting line, and the, um, the dots would be fairly close to that line. If the dots fell exactly perfectly on the line, that would be a perfect correlation. So this is a strong correlation, but it's not perfect because notice that the dots don't fall exactly on the line. And for our moderate correlation, notice that there is a little bit more spread in the dots. If we were to draw some best fitting line through them, that minimize the distance between that line and all the dots, notice that there's still these dots that are hanging way out there. Okay, so weak correlation, the dots look more like a cloud. Uh, strong correlation, the dots are closer to it like a best fitting line. And moderate, well, there's a little bit more spread, but you can kind of see that the trend. Okay, so that's our, our review. Okay, so a correlation uh, ranges in value from negative 1 to positive 1. A correlation of 0 means no relationship at all. For example, correlation between uh, your shoe size and how you're going to do on the final exam for your class, there's probably a 0 correlation there. Uh, don't count on your shoe size getting you through the class. Um, and in terms of scatter uh, plots, as we look at the dots, the closer those dots uh, fall along a best fitting line, the stronger the correlation is. Now let's talk about uh, the requirements uh, for actually using the statistic Pearson's R. There's three of them. First, the variables must be scale. And by that, I mean that there must be equal size intervals uh, between the numbers used. Um, so this would be true for um, interval data as well as ratio data. And if we're talking about nominal or ordinal, we're using numbers as names, but there's not equal distance between them. Number two. Neither distribution should be highly skewed. Pearson's R works uh, where the assumption is normality of the distribution. The distributions are normally shaped. If they're highly skewed, then that assumption is violated. And number three, the relationship between the two variables must not be curvilinear. 